Scarlet Baddis or Dario Dario are tiny wee fish from India. They come from slow moving streams and rivers. Probably the edges of them in fact where they can get a bit of cover. If they were swimming in the open water, bigger fish will surely gobble them up. It makes sense to mimic their conditions in the wild then, so we're going to want longer lower tanks, smaller longer lower tanks in fact, and planted tanks as well. They love digging about in plants for microorganisms to chew on. If we're talking about keeping males, which is generally what we get in the hobby, we're going to need enough space for them because they are very, very territorial. They like their own spawning ground or feeding area. Plants can offer a focal point then, as can wood and rocks. And also, floating plants are great because it gives a bit of surface cover, which makes them feel a bit more secure. Also, moss is good because it can harbour microorganisms that they like to feast on. They are micro predators with a very high prey drive, which means they much prefer live foods than any of the processed ones. You can see then, while the stuff that you're finding plants is going to be ideal for them, but also why it can be a little bit trickier to feed them. They are eating grindle worms here, but they'll also enjoy baby brine, shrimp, daphnia, any of the live foods like that, many of which we can culture easily ourselves, as long as we're prepared to. I have seen them accepting frozen food, although mine at least seem to much prefer to see their food moving so that they can chase it and devour it. I have experimented with crumbling dry food up very, very small and offering it to them, but they don't seem to realise what it is. I have heard about people getting them onto dry food successfully, but that's probably a project that takes some time and possibly not ideal for the fish. If they have that high prey drive, it's probably better to let them satisfy it than deny them it, I would have said, maybe. It may have a bearing though on tank mates. As you can see, I keep mine with ram's horn snails and Malaysian trumpet snails. If you're wanting to keep the likes of cherry shrimp with them though, the adults should be fine, but the shrimplets would be a tasty snack, no doubt. They may predate on fry from other fish, of course, especially when they're ever so tiny. Otherwise, they'll get on with quite a few smaller fish. Anything that's going to leave them alone, they're fine with. As you can see, that Almano shrimp isn't a problem. <laughs> that Almano shrimp that is bigger than our Scarlet Baddis there. He's barely bigger than that Ramsall snail there. A wee bit longer, but not quite as deep. They don't even get to be an inch. This one's barely longer than the Malaysian trumpet snail to the right. I don't find them to be timid. They seem to be quite happy to use the front of the glass when I got my face pressed up against it watching them. But they tend to use the lower levels of the tank. So smaller non-aggressive fish are going to be the ideal tank mate. I keep mine with Emerald Dwarf Rasbora that tend to stay at the top while the Scarlet Badders stay down below. Any of the Micro Rasbora are going to be ideal tank mates for them in fact. They don't even appear to acknowledge any of their other tank mates. The only time you get aggression is when two males run into each other and that's where you get to witness these wonderful dominance displays. Each fish tries to demonstrate that it is bigger and more colourful than the other until the lesser male loses the battle and wanders off. Sometimes though, they do chase each other and they do fight a little bit. This is my dominant male and as you can see, he seems to get the more pronounced black markings and blue edge to the ventral fin. They also seem to get the stronger markings around the eyes. This cave is a prime spawning spot, so he owns this and frequently has to fend off other males that want to take his position. What you'll find is, if you've got several males, they become less and less colourful than the head honcho, the further down the pecking order they are, even to the point that they can be confused as females, and this frequently happens. It's pretty rare to get females, partly due to that. When they're younger and less developed, it's hard to tell the difference in some cases. I'll try and show you that here. 
So here we have a subdominant male, which you might be confusing thinking is a female at first because it's lack of color. That's usually the case in the fish world, right? But if you notice closely, there is some red barring on his flanks. A true female doesn't have any barring on her at all or black barring only. No red on the side, no red on the fins. You can also kind of tell from the behavior. Look, this fish is nervous because the dominant male's here and there it chases him off. Here we can see that competition again. That wee guy doesn't stand a chance, does he? And he's clearly been in a scuff with a bigger, stronger male. You can see his tail is torn a wee bit there. And then we have a female. So again, she's got that black bar in. She might not have that, but this one does. However, there is no red colouring either on the side of her or in her fins. And this is a subdominant male that clearly has red bars. You can see how easy it would be to confuse the two, can't you? But also that there is a clear distinction between them. So they don't pair up and follow each other around like some fish do. This particular female has found a home underneath the leaf here. And this is another reason why I'm pretty sure it is a female. The behavior when a male approaches is very, very different. He's still flexing. He's still showing how big and beautiful and colorful he is, but he's not trying to intimidate her. He's trying to say, hey, look at me. There's certainly no chasing. He is trying to attract her attention and demonstrate his suitability as a possible mate. So I've not bred them myself yet. If I can find some time to put into that and do it successfully, I'll probably make a, a separate video about that. But otherwise, anything else you might want to know, um, they're quite forgiving. They can handle a pH of 6.5 to 7.5 and probably a wee bit outside those parameters as long as you keep it consistent. They're not gonna enjoy big swings clean water and a temperature range of 22 to 26 i think that's probably 72 to 79 fahrenheit i keep mine at 24 degrees and they seem to be fine with that they are an active nano fish they are forever exploring their territory and a wee bit <laughs> a wee bit beyond they're not the only baddies you can get there's at least five that i know of probably more the blue ones are really nice too and then there's uh, black tiger baddies, which are kind of like a half, they've got a half and a half pattern, a bit like pyjama cardinals in the, in the saltwater world. Whichever you find though, whichever you find available in your area, I'm sure you'll enjoy them. What they lack in stature, they more than make up for in colour and character. They should live somewhere between four and six years and are just going to be a real joy for all of that time. If you think I've left anything off or you've got anything to add from your experience, please put it in the comments below and we'll all help each other out to enjoy this wonderful, charismatic little fish.